Hi, it's oh. Katrina Gallus from the Warsaw Sports Marketing Center's MBA program at the University of Oregon. I recently had the opportunity to attend the ESPNW Summit in Tucson, Arizona that brought together many of the sports business leaders from across the country. I asked a few of them if they would share some advice for women hoping to become leaders in the sports industry, and I wanted to share their messages with you. If I could share some advice, I'd say that similar to how athletes need to train in the cities that they're competing in, business leaders need to put themselves in situations where they can educate themselves and connect with others in the industry. That's what the ESPN W Summit was all about. First, understand the type of business you want to be in, whether you want to be on the league side or the business side, whether it's a network or a cable programmer or an agent. Decide which avenue or sports you want to go into, but you have to go into something where you have great passion for. Uh, all of us work so hard in this business, and I think it's really important as young people come up with the organizations to have a passion for what you want and go for it. Do not be shy, be confident, speak concisely, but go for it, bottom line. I would certainly recommend that you set very clear goals for yourself and have a good sense of what path you want to take, but know that you can really do anything you want to do. So don't get too crazy that you know, the path that you say you have to stay on, because there's a lot of adventure out there, there's a lot of opportunity out there. And I think ultimately to show that you are a results-driven person, you can make things happen, and you're somebody to be uh, trusted and invested in from, a, from a, just an intelligence perspective and a go-getter perspective. It's all about impression and it's all about feeling. So if you walk in and you look sharp and professional, that's what you're translating. And there's too many young people that are very, very self-involved as to what experience am I getting out of it. And in interviews and conversations, it's like this is what I want and that kind of thing. You're being hired for a job and you need to fulfill those needs for your employer. And once you do that, you earn that family sense, you know, you earn your way into the culture of that company. But if you're not satisfying those basic job skills and that those fulfilling those needs or going beyond fulfilling those needs and just being that exemplary, then you're just not going to get as far. So I think it's important for people to be self-aware and that know what do you really want out of the job, but then you can kind of keep it to yourself. You know, I mean, people are, are, are excited and happy to mentor and help, but um, there's a lot about the generations that I've seen through the universities and things like that where, where um, no, your, your job is to make someone else's life easier and to make this company successful. And what can you do to do that? And how can you do more to do that? And in the process, you should learn and then you'll be a better person um, overall for that company. And it, it's amazing the people that ask, they don't get as far, but the people that lead through example, I will do so much and I will help them to find other jobs in sports because that's strengthening the entire industry. So in terms of thinking big picture, I care about what's happening in sports in general and um, you know not just our team but also the league that, as far as the NFL goes. So when you go into your job, know what your employer wants and that'll make life a lot easier. My thing was, I was a huge sports fan. My earliest memory of family was going to Bruins games with my father because he had season tickets. And I, you know, graduated undergrad and I was like, okay, now what do I do? Every summer I'd worked at a summer camp. I was not organized like you guys are. And I was like, well, what do I like to do? Well, I like sports and I like to watch TV. Maybe I can do that. So for me, it was just, you know, I'm going to try this. It never sort of occurred to me because I had always played sports. Frankly, I'm so much older than all you guys. I had to play with the boys. So I was always used to having boys all around me, and it just felt like normal. The biggest thing, I think, is to, it's sort of the advice I gave you guys, which is when you feel uncomfortable about pushing, and trying to get your foot in the door, just push a little beyond your comfort level. That's the biggest thing for all of these industries that are extremely popular. I mean, you guys are interested in something that's really popular. So you just have to be willing to, you know, overextend yourself. And when you get that business card, follow up with them. If, if they don't follow up with you, they're a jerk because I followed up with someone, as I said to you guys, I was bugging someone and felt uncomfortable, but if someone embraced me and I always vowed I would embrace them. So if someone doesn't follow up with you, they're really a jerk. Um, the last thing I would say is 
that I think that we really are moving in the right direction, that women are entering the men's field, and it's not that big a deal. I, I think it's all about confidence. When I show up at the TV truck, and it'll be me and 30 guys, and I'm in charge of those 30 guys, I just walk in carrying myself in a way that says, I belong here, but I'm your partner. Um, I'm not going to be a bitch. I'm not going to be um, bossy. I'm going to be your partner. It just happens that, you know, I pee with the seat down and you don't. I mean, that's really... So if you can just carry yourself like you belong there, just like when I was seven years old playing with the boys in soccer. I, fortunately, it was still the age when the girls and the boys were all the same height and weight. That changed quickly. I just felt like, you know, I... I belonged, and, and they accepted me because I didn't feel like I was an outsider. Um, so that's sort of my that's sort of my advice, and just that um, contacts are a good thing. It's like uh, what I said to you guys that the hardest part for all of us was getting into college. Once you get there, it's what you make it. But there's a million people competing to get in, so don't be ashamed. There's no shame in being a bit of a nudge. I'm Jewish, so I can say nudge. There's no shame in sort of saying, I, I you really want me. It's like confident but not cocky. I know that you ladies both have that, and hopefully your classmates do too. It's a fine line of confidence versus cocky. But if you believe and you can impress someone else to take a shot at, with you, you know, You'll, uh, you'll shine. It's just that, you know, getting in. Don't be afraid to do what it takes to get in. See, I gave her my card, and she's going to call me. <laughs>